Every generation has a story. And once in every generation, if we're lucky, there comes a film. A film that reminds us that as fragile and fleeting as life may be, it is ours to live, to love, and to lose. It is a film that reminds us that all too soon the endless sunlit days and moonlit nights of our youth will become nothing more than dust in the wind. And the hand of time having writ moves on. Yes, once in a generation, there comes a film. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is not that film. What? That's right. No shame, no gain pictures in association with HBO Straight to Video Films is proud to present The Girl, Girl from, from California. California. From the tortured and tasteless mind of director Tim Carenzi, the man who brought us Don't You Have a Kitchen to Clean, Honey? You Call This Dinner? The Summer of Tom? And I'll Handle the Joke, Please, Thank You comes the soon-to-be semi-classic story of the legendary king of cool, boy surfer, and pool hustler extraordinaire, Malcolm McCune. Yes, it's the story of Malcolm McCune and his torrid love affair with the breakers, the beach, and one bodacious babe, Shira Imacello, the girl, girl from, from California. California. It's the story that captured the hearts of a nation and stirred the imagination of young lovers everywhere. The Girl, Girl from, from California. California. With Vicky Rourke as Robert Bork, Stevie Nicks as Nikki Six, Gerald Hall as Les Paul, Donald Trump as Thelonious Monk, and Albert Finney as Uncle Minnie. And starring Ella Westcott as Shara Imacello, The Girl, Girl from, from California. California. With Neil Young as Carl Jung, Fred Astaire as an aging Cher, and William F. Buckley as the man who knew me too much. And introducing Orson Welles as the entire city of Reno, Nevada. By day, they catch the rings and ride the waves. By night, they hit the strip and hang at the malt shop. It's not a particularly complicated concept, I get it. A Spinal Tap style mockumentary, but with a real band. What was the name again of it? Uh, the Seekers? Uh, not The Seekers. The Weekers? Whatever. One hit wonder from the 60s. Let's assume you could even get the band back together again. What then? How are you going to start this thing? Uh, I don't know. Get some famous guy from the 60s to open the film? Maybe get some, some famous guy. Oh, who? You gotta be specific. You can't just say, I'm gonna get a celebrity. And... We get somebody like Barry Richards to open the film. Whoa, now we got Barry Richards involved? This is Barry Richards, the legendary 60s DJ, not Barry Richards, the plumber from 68th and Rome. Even if you could get him, what's he going to do? I don't know, it's a fantasy. We, we could start the whole show off with the Reeker song. Have him on XM radio or something doing his DJ thing with that classic 60s banter of his. You know, totally over the top. I'm a B, I'm a B, that's Will I am, that's Fergie, and those are the P's. I'm B, R, the Rees are, the world's most lovable, huggable disc jockey. Can't you just see it? No. But I'm sure you can. Oh, yeah. I can see it. Totally. I can totally see it. But you'll never I'm a B, I'm a B, that's Will I Am, that's Fergie, those are the P's. I'm BR, the Arias are, the world's most lovable, huggable dish jockey. I'm talking squawking at you every afternoon here. I'm the hunk of funk, Harry Berry, the sire of the wire. 
I'm so bad at taking care of different babies. If dogs, babies, if that ain't bad, biscuits ain't bread. The hunk of funk in full effect. I'm in the air chair working out for you, knocked out, smell the pleasure every afternoon, three to seven. But the thing that's amazing me, the Reekers are returning. You say, who the hell are the Reekers? I don't know. Back in 1966, like my first job in radio in Washington, D.C. on Wien, W-E-A-M, to Mighty 1390. This is when AM was happening. Now it's satellite. They knocked the Beatles out of number one. Now, who are the Reekers? I, I don't really know. I mean, it's Tom Guernsey. He's the white equivalent of George Clinton. George Clinton was the Parliament, the Funkadelic, the Brides of Funkenstein. He had 15 different groups, and he was all in. Well, on a small scale, Guernsey did the same thing. He was the Omegas, the Hangman, the Reekers. Joe Triplett sang lead on this. And, and for some reason, this record is back to numero uno. Uh, and before we play the big hit record, let me play you this by the Reekers. This is called I Can't Believe. Hit it! The Reekers with PR! And I can't believe I'm playing this again. And <laughs> this record wasn't that hot then. What the? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yo, Leon, you want to hear the wackiest shit ever, man? There was a group in D.C. called the Reekers. Actually, they were the Hangman. Before that, they were the Omegas. They had a one-hit wonder record back in 66 where they knocked the Beatles out of number one. With uh, Actually, it was called uh, What a Girl Can't Do by the Hangman. Leon, I got to go. The joint's ending, man. I'll get back to you. Number one again, all over the world. I don't know what's happening. What a girl can't do. Man, the Reekers. The following is a presentation of NBC News. Big Bopper. He'll be a fine addition to the collection. Yeah! Oh, hello. We're here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Cemetery in Cleveland, Ohio. And tonight, we'll be examining the convoluted, unbelievable, and frankly boring story of the Reekers, the so-called garage band behind the commercially unsuccessful but critical smash song, What a Girl Can't Do. Why does this song, this band, persist? Why do bands from around the world continue to cover this song? We'll give you the answers. Here we go. One of the most important albums ever released. Uh, ever. I'm really glad the Reekers are getting back together. They're one of the best bands that ever did collapse and re-emerge Phoenix-like from the Rockabilly Ashes. From fans in England, bands in Australia, Sweden, America, rock critics, the band members themselves will give you the answer. 98.7 KUPL, this is Locals Only, I'm B-Dub, and uh, I, I feel a little bit privileged to have Tom Guernsey in tonight. You've got some experience. You, you might be able to give some advice to these youngsters that we normally have on the show. Yeah, part of it might be try a different career if you want to make money. <laughs> Tell us about your experiences with the Reekers. I saw him at the Woodstock, and I saw him at the Budokan, and I saw him at the, the Cavern Club. They were, they were pretty awesome. They never played any of those places. Now, we saw the Reekers once. It was the most pathetic, out-of-tune train wreck I think we ever saw. That's the Reekers. And last, and frankly least, we will reveal the surprising story behind the soon-to-be-released unauthorized film about the Reekers, The Girl from California. You know, when I first read the script, I came up with two words. Get Tim Ellis. When Paramore approached me about playing the gunslinging guitar player in the film, I said, you got it. But that was only the tip of the iceberg. And finally, we'll try to answer the burning question, why is this man laughing? <laughs> I'm Dave Nuttycomb, and I completely disapprove of this message. We love you, Who are the Rikas? <laughs> Tonight, 
in an NBC News special report, the return of The Reekers and the garage band song from hell, What a Girl Can't Do. With performances by The Liars, The Nighthawks, The Roslyn Mountain Boys, $40 Fine, The Slicky Boys, The Woggles, The Hangmen, The Dirty Shames, The Customs, The Maggots, The Woggles, hey, didn't I already mention them? The Primitive Things, and of course, The Reekers. Let me in. Sold out. I have to be here. It's sold out. I'm in the band. Look, what part of sold out don't you understand? <laughs> Bite me. I gotta get in here. I'm coming through. I think we got it, but, you know, you're the director. Well, it is funny, but I'm not sure we're getting the real story here. How so? 
I don't know. Well, look, man, it's 4 a.m. We've been at this eight hours. What do you say? We you call know, when you night. think about it, the Reeker story is funny. But it's also a real classic story of coming of age in the 1960s. And the whole one-hit wonder thing. I mean, these guys had one hit. And then they spent the next 50 years trying to decide whether to live out the dream or face reality and get a job. And then there's the real story here. The story of Tim, the Reeker's bass player, and Stella. What do you mean? Well, it's a little hard to explain. I mean, the Reekers were a great band and all, but it was the people that really made it what they were. And Tim and Stella were the spiritual center of the group. They met in high school in 1962, same year the Reekers were formed. They got married a couple years later, and then, just like the Reekers, it was on again, off again for years afterward. Still married? Married for 50 years. Had a couple of kids and five grandkids. Well, I think. hell, man. I, I don't... A couple of kids, a bunch of grandkids. Sounds like rock and roll with a happy ending to me. Uh, not exactly. Um, you remember how I said that their relationship was always on again, off again? Yeah. Well, about two years ago, Stella and Tim split up again. And then Stella went home, and uh, she hasn't talked to him since. Home? Where's home? Time is a funny thing. There's that golden moment. And you don't even see it when you're in it. When you're 18 or 19 and your whole life is ahead of you. Snap your fingers and suddenly 50 years have blown by and you're just another old guy who's trying to... I'm sorry, what were you saying? You said Stella went home. Where's home? California. Face reality 
reality Turn around 17 Soon be 23 Stayed a while in Memphis Playing open mics and bars Quit my job at Walmart Got by fixing cars Kept on writing every song That came into my head Told myself be patient There are better days ahead But I see a fork in the room Which way do I go? Turn around 17, soon be 43. Yesterday I could sail Never thought that I could fail That's the way it was But that was then Easy then So I thought Bought the dream and paid the cost Still I'd probably do it all again Some time in Nashville, New York, and LA. Every town the same advice you've got to ride this way. Only know that what I feel is what I'm putting out. It worked for Lyle and Willie, but still I have my doubt. Yeah, I see you fucking the which way do I go? Dream on or face reality. Turn around 17, soon be 63. And now the light is growing dim, but I once had a dream. At 17. a funny thing there's that golden moment and you don't even see it when you're in it when you're 18 19 and you got your whole life ahead of you things 
Still.